Neuromas are a very common condition and a very common cause of pain in the forefoot. And most people have heard of and potentially experienced Morton's neuroma, which is the most common neuroma in the foot. Uh, but a lot of people have also heard that they can't solve their neuroma outside of getting surgery. So we are here to talk about neuromas. What are they and what can we do about them uh, aside from surgical intervention? So we've got Andy here to guide us through that. So where do we start, mate? What are, what are neuromas? Hey, thanks, Jim. Uh, a neuroma is irritation and thickening around the nerves that run between our metatarsal heads. Mm -hmm. You could have a neuroma anywhere else in the body as well, but the ones that we're talking about today are this thickening around the nerve in this area. And so it gives uh, a spiky feeling or um, like a stabbing sensation or some referred pain down into the toes. It can be feeling like a hot foot, generally from the second toe down to the fifth, not so much around the big toe. And if we looked at an ultrasound, we'd see the thickening of the tissue around that nerve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that, I suppose, is why part of why maybe people are told that they can't solve it without surgery because, you know, doing exercises or changing footwear, things like that, aren't necessarily likely to change the actual structure, the thickening. Um, but what we've seen clinically is that people can improve their pain and function even without addressing the actual structure. And they may still have a neuroma there, it's just not being aggravated. Mm. This is most often caused because we're not using our foot in the ideal way. If we look at the foot's bony structure, you can see that these, this bone is very thick. It's designed for taking load, and these ones are fine. They're meant to transfer the load across to the big toe. Nearly all of our shoes push our toes inwards, and we end up towing off or pushing off through this part of our foot, which is not designed to take that load. Mm. And so I think this is the underlying cause of many neuromas. Shoes causing compression this way, like this way, and the fact that we push our, <laughs> we push our big toe sideways, so we can't use our big toe to toe off from, so we end up pushing off through here. Mm. And so we may not take away the neuroma, but we might be able to decrease or solve it being inflamed or aggravated or causing issues. Mm. After someone's had a scan, after someone's had a scan and see they've got a neuroma and then we put some things in place and they don't have neuroma pain anymore, I'm sure that neuroma is still there, it's just not being irritated anymore. Mm. And most people don't care if they've got a thickening around their nerve if it's not irritating them. That's right. So that's, that's the biggest thing that we like to focus on. Potentially there is a role for surgery in certain cases that don't respond to conservative treatment or these sort of simple changes in lifestyle, footwear and exercise. Um, but it's always a great idea to try these things first. So. Where should we start? You've already mentioned footwear doing this. Is that yeah, a good place to start? It is, and most podiatrists really don't like looking after neuromas because they don't question the footwear. And when I say question the footwear, they may suggest a wider shoe here, but not a wider shoe at the tips of the toes. And if we compress our toes, even if we're wider here, we're still gonna get compression of the, of the tissues through here, hence why you, part of the reason why you might get a neuroma. And so, questioning the shoe shape first and foremost so that we're actually letting our toes splay and decompressing that area is the number one thing to do. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when it comes to footwear, is that most shoes have a heel. Mm. So even our conventional trainer has a heel and so this is pushing our weight forward to where you have neuroma-like pain and then most shoes only flex through this part of the foot, of the shoe and therefore the foot. And so if we're putting this combination of factors together, the tapering of the toes, the elevated heel, and only flexing through here, we end up with a lot of pressure where you might be forming a neuroma. It's no wonder. Mm. And so to address that by looking at a shoe that is properly foot shaped, that is flatter, so balancing out that forefoot pressure to heel pressure, and that is flexible so that all the other joints of the foot can take some of the load rather than only flexing through this area, immediately we're taking pressure off this spot just by changing the environment our foot is in. Mm -hmm. and, and so conventionally still, we're actually now adding more shoe a lot of the time. 
you might have been told to go into a, um, a brand of shoe that has a big rocker and helping you toe off so you don't use this. This is just adding another layer of complexity that's not required when your foot has all that it, it can do, all, all that it needs to be able to function without this neuromatite pain. Mm. So you can understand that if you put a big rocker here, then you don't have to toe off through here, but that's gonna have an effect somewhere else along the chain. The more you add to the shoe, the more it moves you away from your natural function. And so- And it means that you just have to wear that shoe all the time and it doesn't actually solve the issue. So the if you're wanting to go without shoes at any point, then you're gonna be less likely to be able to do that because yeah. you haven't actually addressed the functional issue. Is that right? Uh, yeah, for sure. And another thing that, often is done for a neuroma is um, getting, getting an orthotic and then we put a little dome on this area to try and help take the load off, like spread the load through there. Again, if we're not questioning the footwear and still putting an orthotic in place, the orthotic often is stiff from here to here so it still only flexes through there. Not really required to get a dome in the right place. I do use those types of domes, they really help relieve but not with an orthotic. You can just put it on the insole of a shoe that ticks a lot of the other boxes, gets you using your big toe well, takes that load off the forefoot back into the rear foot a bit yeah. more. And so that's called yeah. a metatarsal dome. A metatarsal dome, they work really well. And it's not usually my first port of call, but if we've tried a few other things and we're still struggling, then I might put a dome in there to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about from an exercise point of view? So obviously if changing footwear, that makes the most sense in terms of someone's day-to-day -day life. They, uh, are taking away the irritation of compression and um, you know compression on the toes and the heel driving force down into that forefoot. Potentially, they might still need some cushioning, I imagine, especially in the early stages, so that they're not just going straight to something that has no cushioning and therefore applying more pressure. Um, but from an exercise point of view, you mentioned that often this happens when people are towing off from these toes instead of their big toe? Are you looking at how their big toe's moving, how their ankle's moving, what's going on there? For sure, just because you go into a shoe that accommodates using your big toe better to push off, doesn't mean you're gonna start doing that. You may even have a stiff big toe because it's been not used for a while. So we should be addressing uh, whether you have a stiff big toe, a stiff midfoot, stiff ankle. These things can all increase load at the forefoot in that area. So addressing that with mobility exercises. And then also addressing the way we walk so that we start correctly using our foot so that we load and can use through the big toe. And this is done with simple exercises that can help retrain your gait to get you using a part of the foot that's designed for it rather than towing off through the bit that is not designed for it. A really easy way to see if you're towing off like this is to look at the wear on the, on the sole of your shoe. And classically, people will wear out this area when they have a neuroma because they've just been pounding away at that spot. Mm. Yeah. And anything else from an exercise point of view? Because if uh, my understanding is that this having a heel puts more pressure on the forefoot, potentially having restricted ankle motion can put more pressure on the forefoot too. Yeah, for sure. And so we definitely have to address that if ankle range of motion is an issue. And then the gold standard for strength and for getting more mobility in an ankle is to get a strong calf as well. So we should definitely be addressing your ability to push off the ground efficiently. Yeah, and that yeah. can hit multiple things at once, right? You could be learning how to push through your big toe while mobilizing your ankle and building strength in both those areas. Yeah, it might seem like a lot to do when we're chatting like this, but really it's a few simple exercises done routinely and over a period of time can really change the outcomes for your neuromas. Mm. And what about adding more space between the toes? So obviously we've talked about having a foot shaped shoe. What about say something like a toe spreader or exercises to help create more space between the toes? Yeah, if your feet have been compressed by shoes for a long time, they don't magically just decompress. So it's useful to do to use some things that can be helpful, like our toe spaces, that can be worn in a graduated way, building up time while you're moving around home and things like this, rather than um, in shoes so much, to try and decompress this area, take load off there. You could, if you don't even have toe spaces, you could be mobilizing your toes with your fingers and then putting your fingers in between your toes and moving your foot around, creating more movement options for your foot, because if we have an overuse injury, like a Morton's neuroma or a neuroma, 
it's because we just keep doing the same thing over and over again and our body doesn't have the option to use other parts of the, mm. of the foot. So we want to help it move well so that it can move in different ways. Mm -hmm. I, I'm careful not to say that there's this ideal way to walk, walk and that's what I've been sort of talking about, that we should land here, roll here and push off. Our foot should be adaptable and be able to move in different ways with every step depending on how our body's moving and the environment we're moving through. And so, you know, if we're walking on a hard flat surfaces at the same speed, then there is this ideal way, but really we want to have a foot that can adapt and not keep pressing through the one area. Mm. And so often we see with someone with a neuroma, they are just repeatedly pounding at this one spot and that's why it's become irritated. And so we need to give the foot and body more options. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's the idea that yes, there are, is a more efficient way to walk, especially on hard flat ground, like you mentioned. And obviously if you're walking in nature, the ground is always variable and so you are naturally gonna change the way you walk. Um, but even, with efficient movement on flat level surfaces like most of us have, then within that zone of efficient movement, if the body has options, it can change it a little bit depending on what's being loaded less or more. And a lot of that happens subconsciously. And so the big thing is restoring those movement options like you said, so that your body can explore those options through movement at will. Yeah, um, and your body is moving differently with every step across these surfaces that are the same and so, we want our foot to be, be it should be, and we want our foot to reflect that differences in movement. Yeah. 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 So anything that you'd leave people, or anything else that we've missed in terms of exercise, shoes, anything else that we can think about? I think um, like we speak of with other rehabilitation of the foot and the rest of the body, we want to be able to calm it down first. And so that can mean still staying in a cushion shoe, uh, calming it down and then building up its capacity to move well and then adding strength. Yeah. And yeah. we do that. Um, with exercises that are simple and easy to achieve. Mm. Yeah. And low tolerance too, I suppose. If you are used to having a cushion, like you said, you might not get rid of that immediately, but over time you could apply pressure to the foot as it's palmed down so that then it would be more resilient to the loads that you might expose it to on hard flat surfaces or whatever it is that you want to be doing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Great. So obviously this is all general information, things for you to think about if you are struggling to make progress, then it's really important that you seek out individualized assessment and guidance and you can find a TFC Pro through our directory, a TFC Pro just like Andy, um, through our directory in your local area and sometimes even with online sessions um, through the link in the description below. <laughs>